Hello and welcome back to the Weird and Proud Podcast. It's Sam and James. Yes. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hope everyone is. Just... Are we doing a musical version today? Is... I've been <laughs> dying for a musical singing. version. <laughs> dying. Dying for. I've Can submitted it multiple oh my times. God, that actually would do like a Broadway show, Weird and Proud. And it's like of all these stories. Wait, Weirdlings. Wait. How wait. do you feel about a Broadway style show? I'm weird and I'm proud. Hey, yeah. Wait, I got to work on it. I, I, I can't. I'm weird. Yeah. And I'm proud. Yeah. And I'm going to share some stuff with you. And you're going to go, oh, whoa. And you might go, whoa. But you're going to say, wow, that's weird. And she's proud. Unfortunately, due to technical <laughs> difficulties, we've canceled the musical <laughs> version. Unfortunately... <laughs> It's uh yeah, it's a work in progress. Listen, like you just put that on me. Like, and that's pretty good for writing a song. Like, that was kind of a banger. I do think I need to write a science corner song. Yeah, no, James Science Corner. It's I feel like I'm just singing the same line. Um, anyways, wow. Wow, that started off with a bang. Literally. Hello. Yes, you are listening to the Weird and Proud podcast. Like I, we hope you're still listening. <laughs> Hope you didn't shut it off, but I promise I will try to limit the singing. We have a great show. We no, just like things are looking up in no, the world. What? Don't limit the singing. <laughs> um, things are looking up in the world. It's the end of June. We're heading into July, which is just crazy. We're going to Maine next week. It's going to be fire flames. Can't wait. So much lobster. So much seafood will be had. The dogs will be so happy. You promised me a Jay's Oyster Bar visit. Yes. Oh, my God. We have so many spots to hit up. And it's just very exciting. It's kind of, you know, some a little bit of vacay. We'll be staying with the fam. And there will be content galore. So, make. I mean, I would think you guys are following. I mean, I would hope. I would hope you're following on Instagram. Um, and TikTok, of course, but TikTok is pissing me off. Um, anyways, we have such a great show. James, are, how are you feeling? Are you feeling good about the trip to Maine? I can't. You know how I feel about this. I love it. I do. I do know how you feel. James loves Maine. Um, and we, you know, I think a big thing is the fishing. Uh, fishing and James eating lots of seafood. James fish a lot. A lot of seafood. It's just Maine is a great place in the summer. In the summer. It will be a little rough. It's high tourist season. Because, of course, everyone now found out about Maine. When I lived in Maine, Maine wasn't cool. No one, like, when I said I was from Maine, people were like, where is that? Is that Canada? No one knew where it was. And now everyone wants to go to Maine. <laughs> everyone, go in January. Let me know how it is. Um, So we're just in high, high mood, high vibes. The Absolutely. vibes are good. Um, The doggies get to come. Yeah, of course. Of course they do. So it's, we're just in a great movie, but we, so we have a show that is mixing it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do, and I love your feedback on this, you know, instead of like just a deep dive on just like a crazy weird subject and taking up a majority of the time, we're going to do kind of like a fast, you know, summary of weird news I've seen this week. I love it. Um. And then, you know, we'll kind of see if you guys like, like, do you like, like, kind of like a mix of rapid different fire. weird stories? Yeah, like a rapid fire of, you know, weird stories. Not rapid fire, you know, of course, not too quick. Um, and Or rather than like a deep dive on one subject or like maybe a mix, you know, mix it up. And of course, we have James Science Corner. Of course, that's always just a staple. Well, now, I, was, I would do it even if. That nobody <laughs> wanted to hear it. Scheduled. Yeah, no, that's coming. Um, nobody gets a choice in that yeah, matter. No. <laughs> James will always have a sign. Sorry. Um, and then, of course, we have weird secrets. Of course, that'll always be a thing. But um, a little bit of rapid fire because I feel like I need to talk about the Karen Reed of it all. I need to hear about Karen Reed. I know. I, really I don't know what's going on. I want to know to update you since last we spoke about it because obviously the trial's been going on. So I'm gonna do like a quick overview of that, where we're at, what I think about it. My personal opinions. And then we also have like just some weird stories I've seen 
on TikTok in, you know, the quote unquote news, you know, New York Post style type news articles just about some weird people doing weird stuff. Um, kind of and just like some breaking weird news, you know, people sailing in the ocean and Pacific Ocean. We got people raw dog and stuff. We got nudist colonies are down. So just see, I like this because not only are you updating a lot of the weirdlings, you're updating yeah. me on a lot of this, too. Yeah. It's so really it's kind important of stuff. I think that's what it needs to be. <laughs> it's more it's the weird and proud podcast. So you need to talk about what's weird and making the people right. that are doing the weird things, why they're proud about it. I love this. Yeah. This is good. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so you guys let me know. Or, you know, again, maybe you also like when we do a deep dive on stuff, if there's something that comes up. But I think of maybe a little mixing it up a little bit here and there. Let's Can't mix do harm. it. Let's mix it up. Um, also, just I know we had our last show. Last time we spoke, we were coming back from Boston. And... I have been scheduling some shows. I'm going to do an announcement soon, but um, I can't remember if I had said this last time, but we're going to New Jersey, Maryland. And then we also are working on doing a show in Maine. We're going to do a show in Connecticut, finally, because I just do a lot of the shows in New York City. People can just drive in, but just all, all some ex- exciting dates coming this fall. So we'll be back on the road. Yay. Yay. Um, I think that's it for like some housekeeping things, James, anything. Oh, wait, really quickly. I just want to say in remembrance of Remy the rat that I found this week. Remy. He was a good soul. Um, this is just a reminder to like not use rat poison um, because it is the saddest thing. If you missed it, I found a rat in our backyard. It was like this brown rat. First, I like thought it was like a, a mole or like a. Vole, yeah, that was called? way too big to be a mole or a mouse. Really, way too big. Okay, yeah. um, because I just like rats, like in connect, like in our back. It's just crazy. Like you know, you just don't see them that often. And like, I didn't even believe that we had them. We had some last year. Too. I was just it gonna say that's why issue. it's way more believable because they were already here. Yeah. Um, but what we use is like this um natural oils. It's all mixture. just smelly stuff that rats don't like. Yeah, it's literally, it's not poisonous. It's non-to- completely non-toxic, non-toxic to all, it's almost, I don't pets. think, any animals. It's literally just like, I think it's... It's a lot of mint. Spearmint, right. I was they just going to say a lot it, of apparently. mint. And they hate it, and it just deters them from your yard. So, like, we would put that around, like, yeah. we found some, like, their little holes. And it works. And it works. So, um, so yeah, just Remy the Rat, it was really sad. It was, like, literally, I was crying, sobbing over this dying rat um but which was really cute and endearing actually it, well he was a sweetie he was a little cutie okay we need to get into it because we have things to talk about um that are just really important and first we're going to talk about updates on the karen reed case and i know some people might not care about this some people probably are really into it. like if you've heard about it and you're into it like you're into it because we have been in well we i say we like i'm part of this case um but it's been in trial now for over a month i believe because it was like the end of may that we were talking about them going to trial because it was like about a month ago that i did an episode on karen reed so if you didn't listen to that one go back if you are um a karen reed like you know sympathizer yes sympathizer sympathizer um you can go and listen to that podcast we do a deep dive and again i think it was like a month ago that we did that or if you also want like some really in-depth details on the case and i've been recommending her every time but the instagram profile is ashley mary m-e-r-r-y you showed me a little bit of stuff she's good yeah, she does these deep dives. She watches the court like trial all day long. Like she has like the live stream up. Does she have a background in that or something? No, she's just like true crime obsessed. She's, she's just a stay at home that. mom, yeah. and she this is like her pat, like her passion, which is like relatable. Um, she has like all these highlights, and you can really go through the details. And she's been posting a ton about the trial too. So the trial's been going on for about a month, and. Again, like James said, I am a Karen Reed sympathizer. I, in my personal opinion, believe that she is not guilty. Um, I think something sketchy happened in, you know, there's some sort of cover up. There's some sort of frame job going on and it involves the police. So it is, you know, pretty controversial 
a lot of people in high places getting involved in this. Like apparently the FBI is now involved doing their own investigation on this. And also there are rumors that a Netflix like camera crew is in the like watching the trial. The whole Netflix, time, like, in the- Netflix document. I mean, this is something Netflix has now been doing for a little while. Yeah. They want their documentaries to be coming out. As ASAP. It's amazing. Like the as Murdoch soon murders. As possible. Mm-hmm. You know, this kind of like reminds me of like Murdoch murders, you know, like people in high up places thinking they can get away with whatever well, they, they know want. your demographic is obsessed and will watch it. And Netflix does an amazing job. They do. Like it, it, they've really gotten good at getting it out. Yeah, really quick. They're so smart. Now I'm on a way tangent. All they do now is they pay for big stand up or like yeah. live entertainment yeah, like the like Tom Brady crime. Tom yeah. Brady roast, right? Yeah. They're like, "Hey, we'll throw some money at this and this cuz guess what? Yeah. It's a lot cheaper than a 100 million dollar movie. Right. They get to do it for pennies on the dollar and they get yep. just as many views." Yeah. No, so it's smart. literally Sorry. genius. Sorry, way off topic. Um but yeah, this is going to be like if you haven't heard about it now, like you'll I'm sure they're going to be, you know, Hulu will have a documentary. It's it's crazy. And again, I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but just some updates since last time we did an episode on this and kind of what's been going on with the trial. So here is kind of like the main points. Of course, it's been going on for a month. So there's a lot of details to this. But here's what really stuck out to me that's come out. So. The whole thing with Karen Reed's taillight. Okay. In, if you remember, they, a huge piece of evidence was that Karen Reed's taillight was broken. So that means she had to have hit John. That's proof that she ran him over, she hit him, and she killed him. And, you know, of course, the de- defense is like, there's, of course, a reason there's a camera that footage that has been found and shown of her pulling out of her driveway at 5 a.m. that morning when she realizes John hasn't come home yet and hits John's vehicle that's in the driveway. And there's view, there's footage of that, but they say, no, this, this crack in this taillight had to be way more force. Like this is, you know, it was completely crushed. Well, some of the crazy evidence that's come out in the trial, like a big bombshell was, first of all, they didn't find any taillight in the snow first thing that morning when they were called when the police were called you know of course they were doing a search they didn't find any pieces of taillight and then it wasn't until another 12 hours later that they're like you know what let's go back and do another search that they found the pieces of the taillight and during those 12 hours they had karen reed's car in police custody like in this carport where they were all you know trying to get as much evidence from the car trying to see if they can get dna from it and Evidence was submitted to the courts about the, you know, the police in the carport looking at this car. And basically, it turns out the footage by the police was edited. Of course. It was like five minutes were taken out of this footage. And, you know, the defense is saying that that was when they went and got more taillight pieces and then went and hit them and framed it. And this footage is all edited. It's They swapped it around. They, like... Um, what do you call it when you like switch the left to right? Is there like a word? Not like swapped it, but they, you guys know what I mean. Swapped it. I don't know if there was like what a What do you mean left word. to right? Like, so say a car's, you know. They mirrored it? Yeah. Yes. They flipped it? Okay. Yeah. They flipped it. Whatever. I don't know if there was another word for that. Um, To show that like they weren't messing with the right headlight. It's just all really sketchy like stuff is missing when it shouldn't be things are just so fishy so that was like a big bombshell that the police edited all this footage of them you know looking at their looking at karen's car so how did they they proved that the footage was edited yeah like that has been proven beyond a shadow okay just checking in yes yep um Another big thing is just that the crash site makes no sense. This is one of the big piece of evidence the defense is trying to prove. John O'Keefe was 30 feet from the street. So Karen Reed had to hit him going backwards. Um, the Commonwealth, the police say that she was going driving backwards 24 miles per hour and hit him with such force that he flew to the side in the yard 30 feet. And his phone was found underneath him. 
So how did he get thrown in a way that his phone, you know, and they don't know if it was in his pocket or what, that the phone fell underneath his body. Um, also the injuries they had, the defense had several witnesses or, you know, um, not witnesses, but like professional, what are the, why am I like blanking out on some of the weird words? Like a uh, witness expert, an expert, an expert. More like couldn't think of the word expert. <laughs> Well, I was like trying to think if there was like another special word. Like I'm trying to sound smart here. Okay, shut up. Um, so they had these experts on the defense side saying these injuries make no sense. How far would he even? How far did he throw backwards? Thirty. Thirty feet, feet to the side. Three. He so was, that's three basketball hoops. Yes. A basketball thrown hoops to ten feet. To onto the yard. So she. So not at, even thrown backwards in the street because of course her car was in the street. He was knocked. 30 feet into their yard. How long? So let's think about driving a car backwards. I want everyone to picture driving a car backwards, yep. 24 miles an hour. Yep. How long did she have to get the car they say it was to like 24 feet. miles an hour? Yeah. That'd I mean, be tough make... to get a car going backwards. Exactly. 25 miles an like hour. it literally makes no sense. Also his injuries, he had cuts all up and down his right arm. Okay. Which again, the def- or the Commonwealth was trying to say it was from the tail light that scratched him on his arm. They're like, no, he had a gash on the top, like kind of back top part of his head. He had bruising on his hands on the uh, on the back side of his hands. He had a gash on his nose and black eyes. And his clothes were ripped. He had holes in his clothes. He had vomit on his clothes, blood all over his clothes. And he had a huge rip on the front of his shirt. So, like, how does a car going 24 miles per hour backwards hitting a 200-pound man, like, it just does not make any sense. He could have yeah. been carried on the car for a little while, I suppose, and scraped. But, like, and there would be like, his face tire marks. It. There were no tire yeah, marks. You're saying were no... there's some stuff. You never know. Whatever. James, are you like on the, are you like working no, for the police? No, I'm on the side of the truth. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, but maybe, I don't know. Did John Proctor call you? He's the head cop on the police side. Proctor. And he's a dick. Um, so. Oh, good. At least you're not playing favorites. No, not at all. Uh, well, he's a dick because, so here's another thing. Just like a side note. He was, they uncovered all his text messages, like texting other people and his family and like his cop friends talking so much shit about Karen Reed. Like she apparently like has, I think it was like IBS or Crohn's. He was like, yeah, she's a leaky ass. She's a flat ass. She always has shit coming out, calling her C-U-N-T. Tell, saying that they're going to take her down, that she's screwed and that she's a bitch and she deserves it. All this crazy stuff. So he was like talking a bunch of crap about her. Um, another thing, another p- big piece of evidence that's come out too is the plow driver. There was a, of course it was snowing that night. The plow driver who's been plowing that neighborhood, doing their driveway forever since they've lived there. He, his name was Lucky, kind of, you know kind of freaky little sign lucky because this was huge he was driving by at two in the morning when they say that that john was hit around 12 45 a.m is when they said that john was hit so at two in the morning the plow driver was driving by there's about three or four inches of snow and he says he saw nothing in the yard and there you definitely you 100 would have been able to see three four in inches of snow is nothing That's not with a huge 200 pound guy you're gonna see someone in the lawn he said he saw nothing also an- another big piece of evidence that come out too is that people of course were looking at their phones at their activity karen connected to her home wi-fi at 12 36 a.m and john was supposedly dead at 12 45 so that was a big piece of information um and oh and so they say too that like john never of course then could have never entered the house he would have never gone inside because if she hit him on his way in he would have never gone inside but they have around that time when he was dropped off also on his like phone activity showing that he walked up three four or went up and down three flights of stairs so it's just crazy those are like the biggest things that have come out of course you know the commonwealth has you know, experts that they say, you know, or car crash people are like, no, it is shows that it's 
that he was hit by a car. This is could happen. Um, but then, you know, so it's just crazy, like how there are different experts and, you know, you have one expert, quote unquote, on the Commonwealth side that's like, no, this is definitely, you know, shows that he was hit by a car. And then the defense hires some. Or There's hires, always an expert that can say one thing. Exactly. Is true well, that's the, the thing is you can like get anyone to, you know, claim they're an expert. Um, but they had like some really good experts on the defense side that proved that they, you know, were complete third parties. Like one of them was worked for the FBI and were like, this does not show any like signs of being hit by a car and there was a woman who was an expert that showed that the scratches on his arm were from she was like 90 percent sure it was from a dog and they had a dog at the house that night so anyways it's crazy and as you know we're talking this is saturday we're this date is saturday june 29th 29th is say the 29th yes yeah. um and as of friday like both sides were done they went to the jury i think it was on wednesday they like went to deliberation and the jury is a hung jury right now oh yeah so she'll get out well not that it, it might go to a mistrial and they have to do it all over again and the judge is really pushing like you guys need to figure it out like she keeps they keep going to her and they're like we can't reach a decision and she's like keep you need to figure it out type of thing so it's just if it's crazy. all crazy. So what's keeping if, if all this stuff is so pointing towards her? And again, I'm just playing both sides here. Yeah. Why has the jury not decided she's innocent? So people believe that maybe some of the jurors are being they're going persuaded. that far. Yeah. Rather yeah. than say there's a chance she did it. What are the people in the other camp saying? Look, I'm not what do playing you mean? like what camp? The defense? The Proctor camp or whatever. The dickheads camp. They're just saying she, you know. So their big thing too is that Karen admitted when they first got there that she said, I hit him, I hit him, I think I hit him. But there was never any camera. Like they all had body cams. There's not one cam that had footage of her saying that. There are just like people who work for the police. They're like, no, I heard her say that. I heard her say that. So, like, that was, like, the, you know, the police side, the Commonwealth side. It's, like, the prosecution. I know. Like, I need, like. I'll work on it for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, they are, like, that's their biggest piece. Like, that's how, like, he, you know, the Commonwealth lawyer opened his closing statement. Was, like, I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. She's admitted that she did it. There's evidence, her taillights broken. But it's just like, there's just so many things. Like, they can't get any ring cam footage. Every ring camera wasn't working that night in the neighborhood somehow that our car was driving by. There's no footage. Things are just missing. It just, the way that they handled all the evidence, like the blood that they found, you know, they put it in red solo cups. You've said that before. Like, it just, it's like, this was a policeman that was murdered somehow. And like show some like how were they not like have like the highest level of like white glove service like handling this case you know it's and, true and at the end of the day too it's like ju like this poor guy like justice for John O'Keefe justice for John O'Keefe you know and like I hope that they you know my hope of course again because my personal opinion but that she gets free and then they like the FBI. Looks into these police officers. I want to see what the FBI has to say. Me too. But also, like, it's just like they never did a search for the house. You know, like, John, o like, they never looked at the house. Apparently, they redid their basement, like, a month later. Of course. So the defense, you know, their story is that they think John went in. A fight ensued. They were in the basement. They were drinking. The dog was trying to jump on him. And he got slammed over the head with a beer bottle. They thought he was dead or they weren't sure what to do. So they put him out in the snow. And then again, the, the owner, the wife of the owner, you know, of the house also Google searched how long to die in the snow at 2 a.m. So it's just, and she says, no, I didn't do that. Like what? Like, no, I did that at 6 a.m. When I was like trying to search and just see if that's how he died. It's Internet just, don't lie. Right. Like, it's just too sketchy. The internet and the cell phone stuff is always interesting to me. As long as that stuff is handled by, like, 
right like completely stuff you third can't parties edit, yeah right or more so or by manipulate. people that don't know what they're looking at like right a lot of times when you're looking at that sort of data yeah. if you don't know what you're looking at you just are reporting they're not like well you're looking at this for this case right, right, right. if you just say tell me what happened on the cell phone yeah. well this cell phone connected to this yeah. wi-fi at this yeah. time this looked up this at this time yeah, this, saw this, this did this at this time yep. completely no idea of why you're looking right. at it it's right. just yeah digital details just giving yeah. the data yeah that says a lot yeah so anyways it's just crazy and i know i went into way more detail just because it is yeah, such, such a fascinating a very case. good short i know that was so quick so weird quick. links thank you um well i again like i think there's either gonna be people out there who are so interested in this and you know are like well now they know, know all about it they well, don't now, need to catch I know, well, up that's on the it thing. you're welcome you're welcome okay let's get into some other weird stuff to lighten the you know the mood just because it, it's just sad it's just sad um, okay, this is something that I've been seeing on TikTok that I think you'll be really interested in. Um, there's a sailor slash influencer. His name's Luke, Luke Sales. And like that's his username. Um, and he's trying to sail across the Pacific Ocean. Yep. So he left somewhere in California and he's trying to, I think it's like Hong Kong, that he's trying to get to sail on a 27 foot long sailboat by himself and he's trying to like like most of his videos and this is what the other thing is it's like how does he have wi-fi but apparently like he has like a like starlink type yeah, yeah like a satellite type thing and like he just eats fish all day like he has like sounds amazing <laughs> I literally was how do like, i sign up for this James? but like that's insane well the probably the filipino culture did this like 5,000 years ago, but whatever. Well, that's, I was just going to say, I'm like, I mean, I feel like, you know, it's been done before, so we can't say the first to do it, but like to do it by yourself. And they did it without Wi-Fi. And they did it without Wi-Fi, without TikTok. Can you believe it? That's insane. No one knew. That no one knew. But he, yeah, he can like show his location. And right now he's a thousand miles offshore. That's not too bad. And yeah, like he's made it a good amount of the way. But, like, does he have his passport with him? Because, like, what happens if he shows up to Hong Kong and they're, like, oh, you can't, that could and they, be, like, try yeah, and kill him? Be, or, like, big trouble. what if, like, the winds don't hit him at the right speed and he ends up on, like, one of those islands where they, like, try to kill you? I don't know. Just people literally will do anything except go to therapy these days. Did you know that that's probably how the sweet potato ended up in america <gasps> what, what is that what you were just trying to i learn? wanted to make sure i got the cultures right okay so what happened that's actually part of the reason that they so know they came from ireland potato sweet potatoes <laughs> yeah but that's like the same thing as a potato they're both just types of potatoes is it potato? is it i don't know is it no i'm so glad we're back on the accents <laughs> this is quite the episode you get singing you get I'd have you do like a accent. Hong Kong accent, but I don't think no, anyone would know. That, I would, that would no, be, no, we would no, get no, canceled no. on that one. Yeah. Well, I wanted to get it right, but it is. Polynesian vo uh, voyagers visited South America and brought the sweet potato with them. Wow. Yep. Back with them after spreading it on other Pacific islands. So between 1000 and 1100 AD, so around 1000 years ago, they did this. Crazy. Yeah. They were able to. So what, I wonder what from, he's going to bring. Diseases, STDs. Probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just that's something weird. But again, like that one you can't really talk about that much. You know, like, okay, I hope he stays alive, I guess. He makes it. Good for him. Yeah, that's the most important. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. Um, okay, so here's the other weird news, too, that I knew that you would love. And James was like, oh, I already heard about this. Raw dogging on flights. Oh, yeah. And not raw dogging in the way where, you know, you bang. Not wearing underwear. Where you're not wearing underwear or if you're, like, raw dogging in the in the toilets. I yeah. don't know. That makes sense. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you do. Um, 
but this is a new trend where people are just sitting in their seat over, you know, over a flight, not doing anything, meaning like not watching a movie, not using the screen in front of you, not reading a book, not using your phone, not listening to music, literally just sitting there. Sounds amazing. And I knew James would love that because you really don't like it's not like you plan for things too. like when I go on a flight, I'm like, OK, I need my Kindle fully charged to have multiple books. I need mo- shows and movies downloaded on my phone just in case they don't have a screen. I need to make sure I have my headphones charged like I make sure I have multiple, multiple activities. I always have a book just in case my plan is usually to sleep. I like a nap. Yeah, but I do love catching up on a movie like just to watch i do yeah but the raw dogging story the fact that you brought it up does remind me of times i've brought you to wisconsin and we're driving and you're like what what do you people and you're like what do you do and we're like because you don't get radio service and you just enjoy the world stations And my phone, I had no service. So I was like, what are we supposed to do? It's like talk to each other and sit there. (laughs) Yeah. It's kind of what life is about. Yeah. Like you, there's like, yeah, you can't listen to a podcast. Like my phone wasn't working. had no reception, no service. There's no radio signal. Like it comes like what it ties in with, look, no pick, not picking on you, just culture. It's a product of the culture, right? It's funny. Now everybody's like, Oh, meditate and take cold showers and do yeah. this. Bull crap. That's been a part of humanity forever, right? Yeah. And if you think you need to do 10 million things in your morning routine just to feel better, no, just do some natural stuff once in a while. Get your stuff done in a day that's bugging you and you'll have less stress. It's pretty no. simple. Yeah. It, like sure. sit you on a plane like and not do anything. Yeah, that's mom. good. You sound like a boomer. You're giving boomer energy. Or I love it that. You guys call it energy when really it's wisdom. It's wisdom. Stuff, it's Here stuff it humans is. have been doing for hundreds Here of thousands well, of years. Well, listen, it's different times. Times have changed, James. Does that to tell mean you. it's better? No. I mean, you know, we can get into a deep conversation about like what makes it better. Yeah, it's nice. I can have food delivered to my house in of course. 10 minutes. But it's just different stress. It's yeah. different. We're overstimulated. Raw dog it once in a while. Raw dog. Well, I will say... I do like flights sometimes for the reason where like it is I'm unreachable at that point unless yep. there's Wi-Fi. But a lot of people understand like if you're on a flight, like, you know, you can't, you know, be online, you know, really, yeah. like, you know, totally available. So it is kind of nice that, you know, even to like sometimes when you don't have Wi-Fi, it's like, oh, it's nice that I really can like force myself. To I love be- that people are embracing it and. The, the idea of raw dog in it in other parts of our lives is probably a good idea. Right. Right. No, it is funny that that's like a thing that people do. Like it's that it's a term called like raw dogging a flight. But like, yeah, 50 years ago, like, yeah, you were lucky if yeah, you had a book to read. But most people like that's what they did. There weren't TVs nope. or phones. I <laughs> Just, know. Same thing with like being on a train. This was a. Uh, um my happiness lab which is a great podcast oh, about like different Labs. lessons for yeah how to be happier but it talked about like people love being on trains because there were no phones like nowadays everyone's on their phone but back you know 50 years ago you were forced to talk to each other unless you had a newspaper or something but most people would just talk to each other and like that's so you know oh my god that's crazy like my the person next to me started talking to me you know nowadays <laughs> But, but your dad was, and I both do that, like if we're out at a bar, out in public all no, the time. You guys are always talking. Always talking. So it's just, yeah, it is interesting that there are these terms now for things that like But it's good. Always and done. I pick on it. I, you know, of course I believe in those other things like meditating and that. But it's just funny that we, now we have to program those things in our life. Yeah. When that's how we developed as humans. I don't care. Creation, evolution, whatever you believe in, doesn't matter. That's how it used to be. And our our biology is not ready to make that shift yet. So yeah. you have to find a way to supplement the other stuff in. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't, it, we talked about sleep before too. It used to be the ever. So I'll sleep when I'm dead. Three hours right, of sleep, right? right that right. fad, thank God, is gone. Even though I bit into that one. I didn't sleep. I was sleeping three hours yeah, a night you all the time. You were always like, I can, I can get it like what a normal person Couple gets for eight sleep. hours and three hours. Yeah. Like, okay. Oh, yeah. I used to believe all that stuff. You're nuts. See, don't anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, we love our sleep. 
Um, okay. So the last piece of weird news that I just feel like is really, really important that everyone needs to know is that nudist colonies are on the decline. Thank God. James, let them live their life. So nudist colonies are down. Nudist events are down. There is a German association for, they call it free body culture. And they're concerned that membership has declined. Like they have a members only, like a members group where they all do like nude stuff together. And the memberships are down like over 30% over the last couple of years. Why do they think? I will tell you. Um, oh, like, oh, so when they say in the last 25 years, it's dropped over half. Oh, wow. Um, they had to cancel. They used to do like all these huge anniversary celebrations and they had to cancel it because of lack of interest. And Germany also is like one of the most liberal countries for nudity. I did not know that. And yeah. I'm well, it's funny it, when I was reading this, I was like, oh my God, I remember that. Cause when I went to Munich in college, every park, like, you know, they don't have beaches or anything. Everyone's nude. Really? Yeah. Did naked not know people that. like like most parks you can be nude like any time of the day all day long it, and i poke fun it isn't a bad like it's not a bad thing we yeah, you are, are so German. Scared you should love the nudity well, no, and i love na- nature i love the natural state but i mean look the idea of a nudist colony for forced nudity for some isn't yeah, yeah, fun yeah, right yeah, and that's yeah. okay right um, they should have a place i'm not against it so you know why they think they're on the decline phones everyone has a camera everyone can upload things really quickly the rise of also just like the perfect body on tiktok and instagram people are just way more insecure about their body that would have been i would have got it wrong that would have been my answer was modern insecurities yeah was now everyone the the brain is now that's why raw dogging it on a flight is good we're yep. so we our brain is always going to compare and contrast. It's a natural yeah. thing the brain does. Yep. But now we're so insecure about ourselves that we can't even be ourselves sometimes. Hence the weird and proud podcast. Be yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I just thought that that was really important, and that's like kind of, you know, kind of crazy and sad. That, yeah. Like so many people are just like comparing themselves so much that they can't be as free as they want. And I, I mean. I feel like there should be like something around, you know, like age. Like I know it's not a sexual thing, but it is just like I don't know. Like, you know, if you're a young kid and you like see wieners in your face, it's like it's a lot to handle. But you know, not if you're taught it. So in the well, culture, that, and that's the thing in our Germany, culture, Europe, totally different. Right, especially yeah. Because no, it is. It's just the human body. But you know, it, in those cultures, it's totally different. Yeah, it's really interesting. Kind of fascinating stuff and i feel like i you know report a lot on the nudist culture yeah like that is one thing i just find it interesting fascinating it's people who do yeah they just kind of want to be themselves right and we love that we were like proud sponsors of weird and that's a weird and proud thing that's good (laughs) exactly exactly so all right so that's kind of just like some weird news that I feel like you guys all really need to know. See, I and like that you really did important. kind of go through those. A I little, like the weird news a yeah, little bit. I know I spent yeah. a lot of time on the Karen Reed, but I just think that's really important. And again, you will see documentaries coming out on it. And if you haven't caught up, there's still time because the jury, they still haven't decided what to do. And if there's a mistrial and they have to do another trial, you know, it's just, and the FBI is getting involved. Crazy stuff. All right, it's time, it's time, it's time for James Corner. James, 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 Science Corner, yeah. I need a little more 80s if we're going to do a song. Like, oh, oh. We need to look oh. at two old science James shows. James Science Corner. Dun, 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 dun. That's 90s. James Science Corner. We need to go back to, like, Bill Nye the Science Guy, the original. Maybe Slim Goodbody, if anyone ever watched that. I don't know what that is. What? Did Bill Nye the, yeah, James the Science Guy, ding, ding, ding. I gotta, I gotta work on it. Did Anyways. I feel, did we cover enough? Are we going too long in the episode? Because no. my science corner might be a little too much for today. Really? Yeah. It's too much. Just give us an overview. You can do it, James. 
we'll skip the James. ones we were going to talk about. We'll bring that next okay. week. It's because it's something, good. James. It's a good connection. The people need to hear from you. So what we'll talk Tell about something. is the Nova that is supposed to. So this is more of a public service announcement. Yes. You sent me some wonderful articles from such a re- esteemed science source <laughs> or the New York Post, which I shook my head at. However, I did Jeez. look at where the source for the New York Post came from. No, of course. And look, I respect yeah, well, all writers. They're always reporting no. on something and else. So like you can look, there are people that want to be potential science reporters that probably have to start at the New York Post. Right, and they pull right. from great sources. And I just pick on it to pick yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. And like the nudist calling thing. Of course I back them, but I just said something to be funny. Yeah, James, you're kind of just like hating on everything today. Why are you gonna be such a hater? I'm look at I'm playing both sides. Okay. Okay. The Karen Reed thing made me have to take both sides. I know. All of a sudden. Well, you were playing me. one side so hard. I'm like, we got to at least I consider no, things I, I, here. By the way, I think I do appreciate that. And I think listeners, because I know there's got to be people out there. I'm that... still mad at myself for the nudist colony joke, because of course I Yeah, that's those. so mean. Yeah, that was mean. But okay, Apologize to the nudists. I, I'll, Say, I'll, I'll get nude, better. and then I'll apologize <laughs> to the nudists in Germany. Okay. All right. So what we'll talk about is something to keep an eye on. Because we, we, you say we with the Karen Reed, I say yeah, we yeah. with science. Yeah, yeah. They don't know when this will happen this summer, but it is supposed to. And what's supposed to happen is that there will be a nova explosion in space. So nova radiation. So a, we've heard, you've probably heard of a supernova, and that's when a star collapses on itself, right? Yeah. That's when a star dies. In a supernova in the sky. There you go. Yeah, that's what a supernova is. Yeah. This particular nova that they've identified is now a white dwarf, which is probably about the size of the Earth, and the radiation emitted from it is probably around the size of our sun. So it's not very big. But the particular location of this, it's emitting rays, that light waves that we're going to be able to see. Microwaves? Light waves. We can't see microwaves. Got it. You have to, it's got to be, again, we've talked about wavelengths in, on the podcast before for our loyal listeners. Yep. Next week's, we'll have a lot more about wavelengths and, and aliens. We're going to cover both. Yeah, there's But that another, one's longer. That yeah, one's yeah, longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, is, that is very Can't touch on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's like 20 minutes. But this one is interesting to me because we've already had Aurora Borealis this summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Right. I know. We had stuff. We had the uh, the locusts. I know. The what cicadas locust. On? What? Look, I know. Cicadas. Well, we like in the... Uh, we had, I mean, so many cool like events. The second coming is any minute. We had the eclipse. Right. I know. Are We've we had all die? of these things to see this Nova. Apparently something of this magnitude only happens about every 80 years. What? So it's uh, as Why it's are once so in a things, lifetime, like once in a lifetime happening right now. They kind of happen every year. It's just they call them once in a lifetime because in space, everything kind of cyclical and you don't get to see everything. But sure. this this and it will be visible when it starts. Pay attention because it'll probably be visible for up to that entire week. So you'll be able to see it. It'll be a unique spot in the sky. There is a specific constellation. Did you say where is this? No, no, no. When? They don't don't know exactly. That's why I said pay attention. It's one of those events that they know is coming, but they can't exactly predict it. And don't worry, the meteorite that everybody said was going to hit the Earth is going to miss us by 4 million miles. So we dodged that ball. Oh, thank God. So, but the other side... Uh, there will be a constellation that you can see with the naked eye that if you look into a particular area of that constellation, and I can look that up and give more updates next week, then you'll be able to see this Nova, which is, again, once in a lifetime experience. There's, so what's it going to look like? Do we know? It's going to be probably bursts of light and you might even see some on and off. I think that that's Whoa. what they had said. I have to look up more on exactly what it was. I was just intrigued by the timing of it yeah. because it's kind of cool that we can see it this summer. No, I feel like there's, and there's been so all much these other shit. things. Yeah, I know. It's cool. I know it's a little nerve wracking, to be honest. Very excited about this. Uh, well, that's gorgeous. So uh, keep us posted, James, if you see it. Stay- and remember, this event actually occurred a long time ago because it's 3,000 light years away and it takes light 3,000 years to get here. Right. 3,000 years. So a- BC? Before, was this, did it happen before God? It did. Before Christ. Before Christ. I get I, them all confused. Which one's Christ? Which one's Jesus? Well, which one's God? Aren't they which all supposed the to Lord? be the same? Unless yeah. you're Jewish or Muslim and then there's neither. Religion's crazy. Um, in a good in a good way, you know? Like it's just 
so much so much <laughs> transitioning. Anyways, transitioning um it is that time you guys it's time secret 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 yeah that's right it's time for secrets where you guys call in tell us your weird secrets weird things you've done weird things your family does weird trips weird things you do in your sleep weird things your ex has done or someone you've dated has done have you ever been to a nudist colony if you're oh my god i would love it would be my absolute pleasure to have someone call in and say that they're a nudist i thought didn't we have somebody no i don't think anyone like themselves was was a nudist nudist. i think people have been to like a nudist camp or a nudist vacation but if you have like call in again like i just want to like i just want to talk about yeah nudist cruises nudist things more so last episode we were talking a lot about the sherry papini of it all and we were talking a lot about we had asked a lot of people to call in about double lives narcissists stuff like that so we've got some real good ones um Ooh, i like it revolving that which also like at the end of the day too are just like so sad so I, there are some that i'm just like oh my god that's literally horrible you know like because a lot of these people are the receiving end of it it's not the narcissist calling in um and we also have what else did we see a lot of oh we've also um had some more doctors crazy doctor stories called in dang from the nurses no but i would love actually i don't think we had one from a nurse oh i don't we've got we've got lots we've got lots um but anyways if you want to call in and leave us a weird secret a weird voicemail call in to speakpipe that's speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod again speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod um all right this one is a good way to start off i feel like with a bang james are you ready prepared here we go okay i'm gonna make this shorter keeps cutting me off um love you guys so much um so years ago i was dating this guy and we were hanging out at my house one night and he said after dinner like oh i need to run out downstairs and grab some in my car okay whatever i didn't think much of it um he was gone for a little while but again at the time i didn't think a lot of it um and then months later he calls me um on the phone when he was super high and he used to like divulge random secrets when he was high. So love him for that. It was very entertaining. So he called me when he was super high and told me the reason that he had to leave that night and go downstairs and make up the story about getting something from his car was because he actually had to poop. And when questioned why he couldn't use my bathroom for this, he said it was quote unquote relationship ending poop. Um, so what he did was go downstairs outside to my apartment building. Um, and I kind of lived in like the suburbs and ran around the side of my building and pooped below my bedroom window. Um, so yeah, he had thought I had to grab a bunch of my makeup removing wipes, which I remember thinking, thinking that they, uh, they were missing and proceeded to shit below my bedroom window in basically my neighbor's flower bed. Um, so yeah, and I did go on to continue to date this guy. So it turns out that won't ruin things. You know, there gets to a point in every relationship where you just, you be shitting. You just got to show them. <laughs> you just got to show them what you're made of. Yep. <laughs> you got to apologize. You got to say, listen, listen, stay clear. You need to use the bathroom. While. <laughs> my favorite question to you in the morning. Morning. That is like you probably use the, the bathroom the question you ask me most what do you want it what for dinner what do you yeah what's for dinner or what do you want to do for dinner and do you need to use the bathroom anytime those are daily (laughs) questions that i ask her absolutely every day those questions especially because we have one bathroom in this house which is like honestly just crazy like so it's i would love a second bathroom at one point in my life but I mean, it's just, it is what it is. You know, I feel like, thank God you do ask me because there, I think there were, would be some times where I'm like, what the, f- what happened in here? Who died? That's why I ask. Who died? <laughs> so it is nice that you do ask, but I mean, shitting outside a window is crazy. I will say I do. And I think I've repeated this multiple times, but I love shitting outside. In most romantic stories, like a guy 
usually sings outside the window. Pooping outside a window is of, interesting. Kind of gorgeous. I wonder how those flowers look. Good fertilizer. No, it was just a sand. Like they probably were happy. Honestly, Very, too. Yeah. So that's great fertilizer. I just throw peach and prunes poop in the our garden. Yeah, of course. Yeah, smells delicious out there. Flowers and shit. Um, but that's a gorgeous story. Um, and you know what? Again, I feel like there just becomes a time when that just doesn't matter. But I love that he would tell you secrets when he's high. Because I feel like that normally has the opposite. Like, I don't want to tell someone something that's going to, you know. Just calls and divulges stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, kind of funny. Um. Okay, James, are you ready for the second one? Prepare. Double life. Here we go. Hey, Sam and James. I was listening to the episode today where you guys talked about double lives, and I have a story for you. So this happened a couple years ago, but my parents were married for 39 years, almost 40 years, and a month before their 40th wedding anniversary, I get a call from my mom letting me know that my dad and her are getting divorced. It uh, turns out that my dad was having an affair with a woman my age at the time and planning to marry her. And that sounds very normal, but my dad and mom are part of a high control religion. My dad was very high up in the church and organization. And so this was completely out of character, definitely frowned upon, um, complete double life that he was leading because he created this relationship with this woman first as friends and then as more than that and plotted for months about how to extricate himself from his marriage to my mom there was a lot of scheming involved and needless to say that was quite the surprise and uh, astonished many many people and we still to this day cannot figure out how he managed to do all of that Wow. See, like some of them, like, you know, it's like, oh, that's so sad. That's awful. I know. You know, so it's like, oh, I forget that like these, especially with a lot of these narcissists, double lives, like they're always ends up being people who fall victim to it. Oh, my God. You know, and. And it's not, like what And the question, too, is why did he need to do it that way? Right. And this kind of also comes down, you know, again, when we were talking about the whole Sherry Papini last week, where it's like this idea that like some people do it like almost too like for a rush, like an almost. That's you know, like what there it's is, gotta be. Yeah. It's like an adrenaline rush. He's to in do a it. midlife crisis and you just don't know how to handle it. Yeah. Like be, talk to people, be honest, communicate. Well, and that's always what's crazy is that like. Someone would rather go scheme, have a double life, have an affair, like go against everything they believe in, than have a conversation. And somebody who's like your daughter's age. So let's right. even think like someone half your age. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. what what kind of connection are you going to necessarily have? Is it worth leaving a family for that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or not well, trying to figure out what's happening. Yeah. That's like the age old question when it comes to people who cheat or have a fair, you know, or whatever. It's like, why do it? Like it must, I think, you know, it must be like the rush of it all. The adrenaline no, it's of hard. it all it's in some way. The dopamine is the controlling dopamine. it. Right. But humanity has a little bit of involvement of being able to sometimes, not always, like with some things, you know, how how much are you willing to lose for your dopamine rush? A little bit of extra time when you're scrolling. Yeah, that's okay. That's harmless. Yeah. But yeah. who else are you willing to hurt for your dopamine rush? Right. Right. Yeah. Crazy. So I'm so sorry to hear that. But yeah, that's awful. Thank you for sharing. It couldn't have been easy to talk. Yeah. About. Well, and, you know, it's just sad. It's just you hear stories like that so much these days. And maybe it's just because I watch too many cr true crime and all this crazy shit. But... And again, that's when she said he was someone high up in the church. Why is it always people in a power position, especially right. men, guys? Well, that's the so thing many, too. Because yeah. it's like, wouldn't you think like you're already getting adrenaline and you know dopamine, you whatever, need from being more, in a high like, power? Now you need that. Well, like, is it? Yeah, it's like an addiction. In Why a don't way, you just go like, make extra money? Be that kind of person. Who knows? Who knows? It's crazy. The psychology of like all this is really interesting. Yeah. You know, 
how and it's always too i always love the idea of like nature versus nurture like is this something that you always have like as you know since you were born this you know part of you that like likes to do crazy things for a rush for dopamine or was it taught to you there you just touched on another under james science corner topic i know we should talk by the way another um i know we didn't do any like weird watches this week but um there was a oh, and i forget what it's called i think it's called like four bro like i forget but it's about these or maybe they were triplets so it was like the three brothers triplets and for literally like a science experiment they took these divided three triplets yep. yeah and divided them it. and tried to see what would you know, if that would prove nature versus nurture you know these all you know technically like have very similar dna um they have the, the same exact genes. same dna and now let's see if they grow up in different environments one grew up in a very rich household you know with super powerful parents the other one grew up middle class the other one grew up low class you know it's just this is how i've been describing it to people after you know studying some genetics and stuff in college there's never a versus we are, the human mind is the thing that has to have it's one or the other yeah it's an it's more of an infinity sign they're yeah. connected to each other yeah now there's some stuff that you can like eye color hair color yeah those things are not necessarily environmental when you're born totally, totally. behaviors are the things people try and prove however there's a flex between the two it yeah. would lean more towards as humans we are kind of an open book it's going to lean more towards nurture there is a nature side to it. There is a genetic component with some of it. Yeah. There absolutely there is. Yeah. Was, and there like, uh, has to be. Maybe that's it's... what I would dive into is the nature versus nurture and the idea of it not being a versus, but how they interact together. Yeah. That could be fun. <sighs> Very deep conversations. Deep, deep conversations we have here on this podcast. Um, and you never know where it can go. But I love I love that discussion of nature versus nurture because I think it is really so interesting and like I am a big believer that I think a lot of it is nurture and like what your environment is and how you grow up. I, the ultimate probably it is more of it. Yes. Yeah. Because but you know then again you are just born with some specific genetic things like we talked about the sleeping which will there are certain parts of issues. the gene side where there are anomalies that right right but just fascinating stuff fun to discuss fun to discuss and we love discussing about deep weird topics and that's why we're here <laughs> um okay so speaking of genetic things we also do just to mix it up because i feel like again like a lot and i don't know if that feels like a lot for you guys to do a lot of these like double life stories back to back to back it's like do it sad is it wait it's sad yeah wait it's, just do well it. a lot of them are sad do you want to hear a sleep another weird sleepwalking or a narcissist story i think we it sounds like the nurse you wouldn't ask if the narcissist story wasn't super sad so let's do a sleepwalking yeah well it's just yeah i mean we'll obviously share them at some point but i feel like it's just nice and to mix up the secrets and you guys can tell me like if it's we can do the narcissist story again sometime yeah, is it yeah, another yeah, yeah. similar is it similar to the first similar one? vibes then let's do the sleepwalking yeah and that's the other thing too like if you're asking like you know you haven't played my voicemail or secret, call back call back and again you know a lot of them too especially when we do throw out like a topic like the narcissist then i do get a ton of secrets about narcissists and i mean you know sadly a lot of them are very similar where it was a dad or a boyfriend or a roommate it's a lot of cheating stories a lot of cheating and a lot of just lying for no reason Ugh. you know which is such I, I i don't get it um because lying stresses me out but um all right we're gonna do a sleepwalking one but again we will like get to them i'll just try and mix them in so it's not like all just like depressing things back to back to back but um okay here we go hey sam and james so i know i'm a couple episodes behind um but i have a couple stories on sleepwalking so i know you said um, it could be genetic and my dad and i both slept walk a lot as children so my dad, when he was younger, he would go out, unlock the front door, and literally ring my grandparents' doorbell in the middle of the night. 
and they would go and open the door and find him standing there. Um, yeah, just ringing the doorbell. So I got that. Honestly, I never rang the doorbell, but I did wake up in the bathtub with running water, which was actually horrifying. Um, and then I also would just be found standing over like my brother or my parents creepily, not doing anything, not moving, just standing there. So yeah, super creepy, um, sleepwalker here. Luckily I have grown out of that. Love you guys. Bye. These sleepwalking stories always amaze me just because like, again, I would lose my mind if (laughs) I felt like I was going to go walk outside. Like if you woke up in the middle of somewhere, just like, yeah, like that would like, I would never be able to sleep because I'd be like, Oh my God, what am I going to do tonight? You know? And two, when you were saying like you would stand over someone's bed, like if I woke up and someone was standing over my bed, even if it was you, yeah, I, that would, I like, I would shit myself. I try. I know that you'd be scared by that. So even if I'm like, getting peach out of her cage because her cage is next to you or things I do in the morning. Yeah. I very much try to not be like over the top of you. Right. Because it is like, that's terrifying. And I, I think too, why this scares me is there was when I was in high school in the town where my dad lived after my parents got divorced in Cape Elizabeth, Maine, if there's any Cape Elizabeth people out there. If you guys remember this, it was Cape Elizabeth in South Portland. There was a man who would break into people's houses during the day would hide and then at night when they were sleeping he would stand over and just watch them and that's like what he like how did they catch him because they would wake up and he was just standing over them and a lot of times he would escape like well you're tired and just run out the door right and he would just run out and they didn't catch him for like months but they did catch how did they eventually they did well someone like literally trapped him and like like he did this to the wrong house yeah um so they finally caught him but like he wouldn't do anything he wouldn't steal anything he just got off on watching people sleep so like for the longest time i had this like nightmare that i would wake up and someone would just that be standing would be over ter- me, like if you know. that's a story going around your town yeah that just the the fear like because you it's in your town. You have to put yourself in that place. Right. Like your brain would naturally do it. Like I, yeah, I would make yeah. my dad check every closet, you know, cause I were like, check everything, check, you know, any hidden places that people can oh, go and hide. You have to. So, but that would so still never be enough to me. check everything. Like it would still right, be right, looming there. Right. Right. Of course. So anyway, so that's why that extra scares me. But, and also too, like, yeah, when you're leaving your house or like what you're saying, like letting water run, it's like, oh, that's spooky. I wonder how, like, you grew out of it. Like, was there, like, a medication change? Was it something you were doing? Was it an environment you were in? Like, I wonder how you just grow out of it. Just one day, you're like, you just stop doing it. I wonder you if know? you find a way to kind of wake yourself up. And then rather than getting up, you know how anyone wakes up during the night? Yeah. You find a way to subconsciously... I yeah. think about the story I told about myself where I used to have that frozen dream, yeah. but I somehow, I don't, again, yeah. I, I never would have thought of it till we talked about it. I wonder if subconsciously they find a way to not do it, but yeah. I'd love to hear if you know I how know. you did What's, it. If yeah, you know how you got out of it. Yeah. Tell the, so there's anyone else out there. And again, I know we said genetics and she said my dad did it. Right, right. I still wonder, is there a way that that can be somehow learned behavior? Not it probably is genetic. A geneticist is going to tell me what's right and wrong. I'm not saying I have any idea. Something to look at. If you, as a child, saw like a baby, when you're learning, everything you learn is subconscious, yep. and you see your parents walking, sleepwalking. Like, what if your dad checks on you? Well, he's sleepwalking. Is right. that something that you can learn? I don't know. I don't know. But it's crazy to think about. Um, so those are some great secrets. So again, you know, hopefully you guys like when I mix up the secrets, so it's not all the same one back to back, but I also have heard feedback. Like, why don't you do that? Like a theme per episode and have the secrets match up. But I kind of like the, I like the random secrets, but you guys let me know, comment below. I like the secrets that are tied into previous subjects, which means we can't match them with the theme of the episode. Right. 
Yeah, just so it's just kind of a you know no, a little bit of the, this, a little bit of that. Because it's more so rather than match it to the episode. I like it when people are calling in. I love the stories today because they were all about things we had talked about. Right. So it's tougher to match that to me. I like the organic seats that come from, oh, I'm a little behind, but I, I heard this. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. triggered this thought. Boom. Yeah. That's what I want. I don't want somebody who's just starting to listen to the podcast yeah. and they're, you know, 15 episodes behind and they're like, oh, I want to call in on one of these. Right. No, let them do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 For all those, keep leaving your opinions. That's just James's side yeah, of your no, opinion. Yeah, no, I'm just interested. You know, we're always looking for feedback, you know, so it's... I just want no rules on the secrets because the yeah. organic secrets are so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Give us rules. We can adjust. But the secrets, those of you that want to call in, no rules. Yeah, well, of course. And you can always, always call in and leave your secrets no matter what. You know, even if we did, like at some point, that yeah. might come up. Who knows? Anyways, if you want to leave a secret, go to Speakpipe. That's speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod. Again, speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod. And again, you can leave whatever you want. We just kind of throw out ideas just to maybe get the wheels turning because I think sometimes it does like unlock something where you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot that I did that or that happened. So, yeah, let us know. I would really love a nudist to call in if you know someone who's people. gone to a nudist colony. Yeah. And your experience, especially with if you I swear we've had one before and now I'm just making stuff up in my brain. But even maybe if like. You weren't a nudist, but you went some to one because you got invited. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a sex club. I know it's not technically a lot of these nudists aren't. No, they're it's the opposite. It's right. freedom. But so, I don't you know. can't tie the I'm two throwing together. Stuff I'm throwing stuff out. I'm throwing ideas. I'm getting creative. Um, but yeah, call us in, leave voicemail, always anonymous. We'll put it in the description of this podcast as well. But we love you guys so much. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th, weirdlings. Someone will lose a finger this weekend. But just also just, you know, watch out for your pets. I always like, I'm so sad when the pets get upset by the fireworks. And just be smart. We love you so much. And we'll see you next time. Love you, weirdos. Love you, weirdlings.